What's up, y'all? My name is Taylor, and I am a therapist, and also I work at Heart Support, and I love metal music. So let's do a little therapist reacts. We're going to listen to the song for the first time, then I'm going to talk about the lyrics that are related to mental health, hopefully give you some tips and advice about how you can use these lyrics to inspire, change, and think about things in a new way in your own life. So let's get into it. Today, we are listening to Not Without My Ghosts. That was amazing. Ooh, I love, I love that song. It's a song about mental health, right? Like let's not overcomplicate it. So there's so much gold that we can get from this, I think, and so much we can learn from this. And the way that they talk about it is actually so beautiful and so powerful. Wherever I may go, it's not without my ghosts. You know what I really, I really actually love about this song is that it starts saying like, where my, wherever I may go, it's not without my ghost. It sounds like even the sound of the way that he's singing about it, like there's so much pain in that. But as the song goes on, it's almost like to me, it feels like wherever I go, it's not without my ghost, but that's not a bad thing. Like that's actually just, I don't want to leave them because they're a part of me. And I think that that's such a beautiful way and has really, really helped me and my clients reframe the things that we struggle with. Because I've never met anyone who struggles with mental health, who goes to therapy, who ha or doesn't, but you know maybe has things that they wish that they could talk about with someone. 
no one in the heart support community that hasn't had something horrible, something terrible happen to them. Bullying, emotional neglect, emotional abuse, physical abuse, physical neglect, sexual assault, sexual abuse, all of these things, extreme grief and loss. And those are external things, but we often make them internal problems by saying like, oh, I have anxiety. I have depression. I have this. It's a me thing. But I really like the way that this phrases it because then anxiety, depression, grief, sadness, PTSD, they're not an internal problem. They're an internal symptom or consequence of a cause that wasn't your fault. You know, I I always try to, to think about it in a way of like, if I am always trying to help myself and I'm always doing the best I can, and that's something that I believe, that's something that's a tenant of DBT, dialectical behavioral therapy, is that people do the best they can. If they could do better, they would do better. And so if that's true, if I take that as true, then why would I have depression? And for me, I'll just use my personal experience. It was, I was in a town and I was severely bullied. I didn't really fit in. And I was actually a really positive person, but my depression was a symptom of that cause and became more painful for me to expect and wish for different than it was for me to just believe that nothing would ever get better because the truth, that's not the truth. It did. It got so much better, but the hope became more painful than being hopeless. And so my depression isn't something that was wrong with me. It was a way that my brain mistakenly tried to help me. And maybe it was helpful for a time, but it became maladaptive. And I think that's a lot of what people struggle with. And, you know, a a way to say this that I heard recently is self-sabotage is just misdirected self-love. So anxiety is just misdirected self-love. Depression is just maybe misdirected self-love. All of these things serve a purpose. So these things that we call ghosts, these things that we think are our shadows exist and are a part of us for a reason. And they're actually not bad. And if we can get to know them, then we can get to know ourselves better. And so I just really love this whole entire premise of this song of wherever my, I go, it's not without my ghost, because it is true. We can't ever change the things that have happened to us. All we can do is learn from them and use them to hopefully be better. A quiet daily war, no sign ahead of peace. Look alive for all my friends and try to hide the grief. I don't know, you know, what this is specifically about, but in my experience with grief and when I speak with my clients about it, at first when you lose someone, whether it's physical loss of a death or whether it's a a loss of a relationship or a friendship. At first, everyone is really, really supportive. They really show up and they're there and they want to talk about it and they want to help you through it and they have casserole trains and all of these things. They're checking and they're asking you're doing. But at some point, people stop asking. And it's around that time, I think, when the people who are grieving start to feel uncomfortable bringing it up and they maybe start to feel like a burden. And that's when it becomes this quiet daily war. And it feels like you're in the belly of the beast. It feels like this cloud has been over you for so long that you forget what the sun looks like and you're still grieving and the world is going on without you. And I think that grief is something that maybe comes similar to paradox. Carl Jung says that paradox comes the closest to encapsulating the fullness of life. And I think that grief is also one of those things. And I think that's maybe because there's so much paradox in grief if we allow ourselves to see it. Because in my experience, every single grief that I've had in my life has created a new life in my life in some way. The loss of my best friend to suicide is what led me to heart sport. It's what led me to be a therapist what led me to everything I have in my life. The loss of my most recent relationship is what led me back to myself. I found new life in myself. You know, in my clients, I have clients who've lost parents and they've realized I wasn't living my life the way that I want to and life is too short. And I often say grief accelerates life if we allow it to. It makes us see what it's important and what really matters. And it helps us clear away the things that don't. And that doesn't make it any less painful. And my encouragement is always to my clients when they're grieving, something that you can do when you're fighting that quiet daily war, when you're trying to hide the grief, when you feel like you can't talk to anyone about it, is to write a letter to the person that you lost. And in that letter, to include three things. And the first thing is, I thank you for. And the second thing is, I'm sorry for. 
And the third thing is I forgive you for, and you can include a lot more than that, of course, but those three things can be really helpful to process through. And you can write them as many letters as you want to. Grief is hard, you guys. It's really, really hard. I love verse two. I love all of it. That it's like these ghosts, one to carry sadness, one to carry fear, one to carry panic, one to carry tears, one for my depression, one who wants me dead, one to hide my hollow heart and some I've never met. Wherever I go, I always carry my ghosts. And that's the thing, you guys, is, is these pieces. And this is the, this is, this is the key. This is, this is the key to it all. It really is. These pieces of us are not going to go away. And they are certainly not going to go away by us judging them and by us bullying them and by us telling ourselves how bad we are because we have them. So if they're always going to be here, they're always going to be a part of us in some way, whether or not they're a part of us and they're showing their, their, their showing up or they're a part of us and they're in the background and they become a part of our past experience. We can't erase them. So they're always going to be there. The thing that you have to do is accept them. Acceptance is not endorsement. You don't have to endorse your depression, your panic, your fear, the part of you that wants you dead. You don't have to endorse those pieces of you, but when you accept them as they are, you say, this is what it is. This might not be what it is forever. This isn't maybe what it's always been, but this is what it is right now in this moment. Then you can start to work with it. You can start to mold it. But if you're constantly resisting it and pushing against it and fighting it, then all you're doing is creating more ghosts. Dang, I love this song. Let me know, you guys what you want me to react to next. If you like these, what thoughts you have. And also if you are struggling with any of the things that I just talked about, I want you to share in the comments by tagging out heart support and we'll reply with encouragement. Take that first step. I know it's hard, but you are brave and you can do it. I love you. Have a good day.